Today's video is about Ray Gun, who I'm assuming most of you know of by this point. I better make a video before the 15 minutes is up and this person is potentially forgotten to time. But what I take away from this and what was the least surprising to me out of this whole situation is finding out about this person's academic background. And it's just too perfect that this person has literally has a PhD in breakdancing, more or less. <laughs> I mean, once you get to that point, you may as well just say that their PhD is in breakdancing. What's the difference between that and when you get into what they claim it is? Like, I, I think that she tries to say it's... I, I don't even know. Who knows these days? Academia is so screwed up. The fact that you can get PhDs and things like gender studies is just mind-blowing. And in my opinion, it's not really anything different. Academia has always been a emperor has no clothes situation, and academia is just one small part of the whole, and it's like the Ministry of Truth, if you want to think of it at that way, and then we have the Ministry of Peace, which would be like the, the militaries, the U.S. militaries, but all of these groups, they do the same things. What this makes me think of is how... All the world's a stage and historical resets are a thing. And right when a historical reset happens, there's an overabundance of old infrastructure around that needs to be seized quickly. And academia is part of that. A lot of these places end up becoming universities. And you go and you look at the old pictures. They just look like a bunch of thugs climbing all over the buildings. They look like zoo animals that were just let out of the out of caves that they were stuck in for who knows how long. They certainly don't look like the kind of people that build the buildings, that the historical university buildings. And those buildings do have a magical charm to them. I've spent a lot of time in academia. That's maybe why I feel compelled to talk about stuff like this, how much of a farce academia is. But academia is part of the historical resets and the old world buildings. Many of them are claimed by so-called academics, and they go on to become the experts, the arbiters of truth for the world stage, for normies, and it's mostly a deception. Just, just as much that this person is a farce, so are all the astrophysicists. Anybody who's an astrophysicist is just as much of a farce as this person. And you know what this reminded me of? So, like I said, I've spent a lot of time in academia. <clears throat> Do you know what one of the biggest things in academia, one of the biggest talking points for people, one of the biggest problems that people face is imposter syndrome. Is such a huge topic that nobody talks about until uh, unless you're in it. And then th there's so much imposter syndrome. And you wouldn't feel that if you weren't an imposter, does a plumber feel imposter syndrome when he goes to somebody's house and fixes their pipes or does whatever does whatever their job is? I don't think so. But people in academia so often face imposter syndromes because they are phonies. And another aspect of this is that this again works on all all areas of the world follow the same pattern that there's certain classes of individuals that don't play by the same rules as you and I, as the plebs. And these people, they're illuminated, elevated into the spotlight without any, any sort of real, you know, skills or experience. These people are put into positions that they don't deserve just because they know the right people. And or they're a part of the system. They they do dirty stuff behind the scenes. They're they're willing to be unethical, and that's often. This seriously reminds me of one of the more triggering parts of Pauline Christianity is is where Paul likes to tell you that oh everybody who's in in a position of power in is a governor or whatever uh, has any sort of political or even your work people. Paul argues that, oh, they're put there by God, so you got to listen to them and do everything that they tell you to do, which is, in my opinion, very dangerous and false information. 
And I think that a lot of times bosses are satanic and they're not there because it's deserving. They're just a Muppet and they're a part of the Baffo Club. And you know how the, the road to hell is paved by good intentions? What I think is another example of the, the road to hell is paved by, the road to hell is paved by people who are just doing their job. How many times have you run into somebody where they're like, sorry, ma'am, sorry, sir, I'm just doing my job, but everything about the situation is completely unfair, goes against any sort of logic, and is, you can just tell, outright evil. How many times do people do things that are outright re evil, and they just say, sorry, just doing my job? That's not an excuse. Just because it's your job, just because your boss is telling you to do something that's evil, doesn't mean that you get away with it. And... The people at the top are evil. And that's why I take, I mean, I think of Jesus going into the temples and flipping tables. And I would ask Paul, hey, did the did the big wigs in the, in the temple think that was a nice thing for Jesus to do that? Would they have ordered Jesus to do that? If, you know, you might think of them. Anyways, I don't buy into the whole Christians do uh, are just, uh, you know, f floor mats and need to do exactly what's told. No, I think that we're meant to have strong morals and oppose the evil that the institutions try to push on us. And uh, I've actually known, I know people that have been fired from, uh, from jobs in academia for just holding to their truth and saying like, no, I don't believe in evolution. That's enough to get you kicked out of academia these days. You gotta be a, I don't know, you either have to be a part of the club, know people, Anyways, let's just, I'm going to read the comments. I've already said a lot. Let me know what you think about the ray gun situation. Is it a psyop? I mean, it's possible, but it's also very equally possible that this is just some psycho strat on a power trip who is totally delusional. And this happens all the time where, I mean, or is it a, is it some sort of hazing ritual? Uh, because these people, they are into these hazing rituals or what do you call it when you force somebody to do something embarrassing? Anyways, let's read. What does Reddit have to say? I thought <clears throat> I thought she was just doing this as a hobby and was a PhD in some other field, but nope. She's making 100k plus a year to teach this and she's not even good at it. She's making 100,000 a year. She's a lecturer at McGuire according to their 2020 for pay rate starts at 110k. At least in America, you're if somebody works for the government, you can look up their their pay. That's part of what really pissed me off and helped me <laughs> quit my university job, I started looking up all the most annoying people in my department. I started looking up how much money they made. And I was like, oh, of course. I'm over here teaching hundreds, working at the factory, the the diploma factory, and these people with cushy, not doing anything jobs, and just making everybody else's life hell, and being douches. Oh, they're making over 100k easy? I can't even live on what I have? Sounds about right. Yeah, you got to know people, you got to be a part of the system, you got to be a part of the club. If you're not a BAFO member, you're not ever going to get the same out. Work is never going to be equal for you. There's going to be people who are elevated undeservingly, and that's not to say it's impossible. If you're a really hard worker and you're in the, of the right situation and you're blessed, it might work out. But there's plenty of real-life people who are great workers that they just get abused, really. Let's keep reading. <clears throat> it's a bigger topic than you might realize. The uptick in non-STEM research has been boosted by the shifting focus of Western societies towards areas with focused on inequality, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, a lot of it is about funding, financial backers. Yes, yeah, so much of academia is political, and it's about funding and grant money. Anybody who's been to a university can tell that it's much more about social programming than anything. Like, when I think of universities and stuff, I don't think of, like, oh, all of the money is being spent on scientific experiments and conducting experiments following the scientific method. No, it's much more like the social aspect of it. And, yeah, very political. Uh, a lot of it is forced very obviously liberal-minded, forced, maybe this is different in different parts of America, but the bias in academia is so out of control. 
and all you got to do is learn statistics, learn about things like bias, and it just shows you that academia is a big emperor has no clue. How can everybody in academia be so stupid or misguided that they don't understand basic statistics and things like having a bias? And they're constantly showing their bias. And that just shows you that it's nothing but an echo chamber. Anyways, I guess this is Rachel Rachel's guns thesis. Deteriorating gender in Sydney's breakdancing scene. A bee girl's experience of bee boying. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Man, and this was way back in 2009. This thesis is presented in partial fulfillment of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy Department of Media, Music, Communications, and Cultural Studies, Faculty of Arts. <laughs> so, I mean, if this person was a, a boy... Do you think they could have gotten away with writing such ridiculousness? Uh, probably not. Academia is... I mean, I, if you're a woman in a STEM field, you're, it's a lot easier for you. And, I mean, humanity, this is humanity, so it's a little bit different. But it's really not all the same. I don't think everybody can go in and write the same garbage. I... Recent, somewhat recently did a video on Martin Luther King, and was it Martin Luther King? I think so, Dr. Martin Luther King, is Martin Luther King has a, you know, thesis, but it's totally plagiarized, and that's because a lot of these people is just very fake. It's all fake. N not everybody plays the same, plays by the same rules. Some people can just be handed a diploma and they don't have to do anything. L there's just somebody else writing their papers for them and slaps their name on it. There's all sorts of, online, there's all sorts of places where you can get people to write your papers for you. And if you go and look, they will literally write doctor, doctoral level thesis papers for you. If you have the money, you can get a doctorate. And you can just pay somebody to write your thesis for you. I don't know if that's what's happened in this case. Very possible. <laughs> I don't know if it's a meme or not, but I read that her PhD thesis was on queering in breaking. I wonder, that said 2017, this said 2009. Anyways. It's not just the arts... University arts is a joke, but all of the university stuff is a joke. And especially when you get into the pseudosciences like astrophysics, those people, they're, they're either totally delusional and they buy into the whole thing, or they know what they're doing, they know that they're pushing BS, and I don't know. I, I don't know if a regular non bafo human could go get a PhD in astrophysics and get access to high-level uh, telescopes and stuff. Uh, I don't even know if that's possible. Can, can a non-club member get access to a so-called carbon dating machine? I don't even know. I have no idea. Because it's such a club. It really is. The academia, it's part of the club. And if you're not in the club... You're not going to make it in the same way. You you don't have the same access. And a lot of this world, it really is about who you know and access, whether you have access granted to, to go into the secret rooms and whatever. This stuff, just talking about the waste of money, how much of a waste of money it is to fund these people. Yeah. So this, this ray gun thing, I mostly said everything, but it, it goes deep. It goes deep if you start looking into the stuff. Apparently the entire breakdancing thing was run by like ballroom dancers. And this person is involved in ballroom dancing. And how did this person even get qualified for this? And I, so I didn't corroborate this, but I read that like her husband and her teacher were involved in the judging of the qualifying thing but even that doesn't even it doesn't even really matter cuz some wacky stuff with the olympics has happened before where uh 
there's this famous story of a, a snowboarder who they looked into what you needed to do to qualify, and because women's snowboarding is not very popular, they were able to just like literally snowboard downhill and not do any tricks and get last place in a couple qualifying tournaments somewhere, and that was enough to get them qualified to go to the Olympics. And they were snowboarding half pipe, but they just like snowboarded straight down the hill. The Olymp the world doesn't work how people think it does. It's a lot more patchworked together, fake it till you make it, and people assume that there's all these checks and balances in place and that the world is fair in a way where it really isn't. And it's like, how did this person make it to the Olympics? Well, they just knew the judges. A lot of times it's just that simple. Bob's your uncle kind of thing. Uh, which is a, a cool Britishism. If you don't know about Bob's your uncle, look into it because it's a, it's a meme for a reason and it's been around for a reason. At first I thought it was hilarious, then I realized how privileged you need to be to take the piss this hard. <laughs> Is it an art piece? I don't know. Does it matter? All the world's a stage. Let me know what you think. I just thought this was funny, and to me it's just a, a perfect example of academia that this is how cringy academia really is. Like, this is a perfect representation of how cringy academia is. And people think that we're on the pinnacle of technology just because we have access to cell phones, but nobody knows how to build a cell phone. This is all just stuff that was given to us. I think that people think really badly about what it means to be an advanced society. Advanced societies were ones in the past that had all... They, they didn't have a rat race. And humans were allowed to live life, and the automated stuff was all the boring stuff that humans shouldn't be doing, and that robots should be doing. And if there was AI around, it was managing all the, the boring stuff that was helpful, and it wasn't just cranking out images and uh, music and fake, Im and fake videos of people. And just because people in times past weren't shown with a cell phone in their hand, that doesn't mean that they didn't have technologies available. It just means that they had decided to live a way of life that revolved around real, authentic things, having instruments made out of real materials, real wood, going into the cathedrals with those amazing... Nobody has improved upon that technology by now. Nobody has built anything better than a cathedral in an organ. And, uh, yeah, a big illusion that people are under because they dazzle us with technology that they hand the plebs. Uh, none of us know how to build a cell phone. This is fallen angel technology, in my opinion, that's been around for ages. There's a reason that the layout of these cities, the physical layout of these old world cities look like computer technology. They knew about it. They had it. They just didn't... They had been through it by that point. We're already sick of, of Facebook, and we're already sick of the fake internet that's just full of bots by this point there were societies in the past that made it through this and they they figured it out better and they weren't enslaved they they weren't running a rat race they just got to learn how to play beautiful music on all the varied instrumentation that used to exist that doesn't exist anymore they used to learn how to paint and write beautiful poetry they all wrote calligraphy wrote beautiful letters to one another that's more advanced. They built they built buildings out of stone and highly ornamented it to last for generations. And they filled those cities to the brim to the point where they had to build those tiny little pizza slice buildings. Yeah, we're we're just living in the crumbs of it. And this is a <laughs> clown I mean it's clown world. We're in clown world at this point. <laughs> Live it up. Love the clown world for what it is. Get your laughs while you can. Hope you enjoyed this video. God bless everyone.